So now we're going to talk about some of the disadvantages to being on the gold standard. And the first thing I'm going to do is just make some of the stuff disappear. So we're going to use the example that we used in the previous video, but we're going to assume there hasn't been any technological innovation. So just to recap, this means that country A makes country A burgers for the price of one country A dollar, which is equivalent to one gram of gold, and country B makes country B burgers for the price of two country B dollars, which is again equivalent to one gram of gold. And country A and country B trade, you know, burgers between them so that country A sends country B five country A burgers and in return gets five grams of gold and country B sends country A five country B burgers and in return gets five grams of gold, which implies that there's no trade imbalance between the two countries. So let's assume that country A and country B have very different unemployment rates. Let's assume that country A has an unemployment rate unemployment rate of 25% and country B has an unemployment rate of let's say 5% and a 25% unemployment rate means that 25% of the population that could be working don't have a job and so let's assume that people in country A are very angry at the government of country A because of this extremely high unemployment rate and they really want the government to do something about it so now let's ask ourselves, what can the government do about this high unemployment rate? How can they get, how can they create more jobs for the people in country A? Well, one thing they could do is they could try changing this interest rate over here. And they could try changing this interest rate to, let's say, 4% in the hopes that people will look at the lower interest rate and be much more likely to borrow money for banks and use that money to fund new projects where they're able to employ people and thereby cause this unemployment rate to go down. But as you'd recall, it's very different for two countries on the gold standard to have significantly different interest rates. Because just say country A has a 4% interest rate and country B here has, still has a 5% interest rate, that will imply that gold will flow from country A to country B in hopes of basically capturing this 1%, 5% minus 4%, the 1% interest rate differential. And so the point is, is that if country B has a very low unemployment rate and really sees no reason why they should have a lower interest rate, it's extremely difficult for country A to lower their interest rate as well. They just can't do it because doing that would imply that gold will flow out of the country into country B. The second thing the government could try doing is they could try changing this ratio of 10 to 1 for money supply to gold. As in, they could say, well, you know, right now the ratio is 10 to 1, but in the future it's going to be 20 to 1. And thereby, that would mean that they could increase the money supply to 2,000. The problem with doing that is that people will then suddenly think that, wait a second, you told me that you were on the gold standard and that your currency was going to be backed by gold, you know, with this ratio of 10 to 1. But all of a sudden it's 20 to 1. I don't really trust that this currency is going to be worth something in the future. And so I'm just going to go to the bank and I'm going to exchange my currency for gold right now. And so the point here is the government can't really do that either. Because doing that is the same as going off the gold standard or devaluing your currency. And so the only thing the government can do to expand this money supply number is to really figure out a way to get more gold into country A. And so the logical thing to do is to try to basically create a trade imbalance. So what you, what you hope to do as a government of country A is to basically figure out a way to export more burgers than you import thereby causing a trade imbalance which causes gold to flow to country A which will cause this gold reserve number to go up and thereby cause this money supply number to go up as well which the government hopes in the long term will cause the unemployment rate to decrease and so what this really all comes down to is the following statement when country A and country B are on the gold standard and country A has a higher unemployment rate the only thing that they can do to get more gold into the country and increase the money supply and decrease unemployment is to somehow get better at making burgers. That is the key point. And so then you might ask yourself, well, how does country A get better at making burgers? And so, you know, one way you could do it is you could invent some new technology that somehow makes burgers better, but that's kind of difficult to plan for. So let's look at one country A burger. 
that sells for one country A dollar, but there are different components of how much it costs to produce that one country A burger. And let's say that the components are that 80% of the cost is in wages and that 20% of the cost is raw materials. So the actual food that's uh, going into the burger. So if you wanted to make country A burgers for cheaper, you could try decreasing the cost of raw materials or try decreasing the wages. And that will allow you to create country A burgers for less money and therefore be able to sell more country A burgers. Now we're going to assume, and this is not an unreasonable assumption, that it's extremely difficult to change the price that you pay for raw materials, this 20% over here. But what you can do is you can try changing these wages. So let's say that you've negotiated a deal with these workers who make burgers and now you've gotten it such that you can make a country A burger for half the price. So we're going to assume that this price over here of country A burgers instead of being one country A dollar is now half a country A dollar and that that equals to half a gram of gold because the exchange rate hasn't, hasn't changed. Now because country A has figured out a way to make burgers for cheaper it implies that they, people sitting in country A, will no longer really want to eat country B burgers because they're twice as expensive. And so you might expect that the number of country B burgers that are being imported will go to zero, causing the gold outflow to country B to also go to zero, and that people from country B will now want to eat more country A burgers because they're half the price they were before, causing the amount of burgers to country A, let's assume, to increase from five country A burgers to ten country A burgers and thereby keeping the amount of gold flowing to country A at five grams. And the reason it's five grams is because ten country A burgers cost half a gram of gold each which is equal to five grams of gold. So now what's happened is because you've negotiated a lower wage from the workers in country A there is now a trade imbalance. So the trade imbalance is that the gold there's five grams of gold flowing that way, meaning flowing to country A. And so this implies that the gold sitting in country A will change from 100 to 105, and that will cause the money supply to be 105 times the exchange rate of 1 times the 10 to 1 ratio, which is equal to 1,050. And this increased money supply means that there will now be more money circulating in the economy and hopefully some of it will go to actually funding projects that will cause the unemployment rate to go down. That will cause this number over here to decrease. So just to step back for a second, the reason that this entire system that we described is a disadvantage for the gold standard is because when you think about it, you realize that the government doesn't really have a lot of power when combating unemployment uh, in their country. You know, they can't really change the interest rate because that will cause gold to leave. They can't really change the exchange rate or this ratio of money supply to gold because that's the same as just going off the gold standard. And so the only thing they can really do is somehow get country A to be better at making burgers and the most common way of doing that is to basically force the workers who are producing things in country A to work for less money. So the point is, is that there's not a whole lot the government can do and the options that are open to them are pretty unpleasant options.